Hey, how's it going? It's Brooks. Uh, back with another real-time character design. Back with another. That's totally... It's your boy, Brooks. Back at it with another. Um, so usually with my art, I'm doing things that are time-lapsed. And this is sort of a, a situation where instead of speeding things up or uh, editing things down, right? Here's a giant hand in the, in the camera. I'm walking you through the entire process of uh, the character creation process. Um, so what I did was I reached out to some patrons who gave me some ideas. That's sort of what's what's compiled over here. So uh, everybody who who gave prompts, thank you very much. Uh, Pandwiches, AJ, Eddie, uh, Blue Draconic Knight, Jacob Miller. So a few things that, that people suggested. What's interesting about these is that they are all visual or aesthetic ideas and contributions. So I am left... Uh, to kind of devise my own sort of personality and stuff. And a few of these things kind of, I think, clash with each other, but there's a way to sort of incorporate at least a little hint of everything, okay? So Pandwiches gave uh, the suggestion of the Quetzalcoatl, which is this sort of uh, winged uh, serpent, sort of snake bird, right? Uh, this is this is a Quetzal, a Quetzal or a Quetzalcoatl, the, the the actual bird um, that is has this very like snake like tail in a way. I mean, as far as the shapes go, obviously it's just long feathers. So that was the the first suggestion from from Pandwiches there. Um, Eddie gave this idea of a character that kind of comes together, made up of multiple parts, uh, like a Voltron character, but not necessarily a robot or not necessarily multiple robots, which is interesting. Like I. I thought about that for a little bit of like organic characters that are combining in a in a Voltron esque fashion, and all I can think of is this one Adventure Time episode where Finn is, uh, I think, a foot, and like a couple other like he <laughs> they they kind of make this sort of him and a couple other pieces of people kind of make this like <laughs> I don't know <laughs> this amalgam kind of human. Um, but I like the idea, the Voltron amalgam. So I, I have something that these can kind of all go together with. Um, Jacob suggested a legion of robots of scrap that kind of are, are mismatched. And I thought he said that they would combine together. No, I think I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm convoluting that with, with Eddie's idea. And then Blue Draconic Knight was talking about uh, a planetary dragon. So a dragon that's sort of celestial, right, or made of pieces of the solar system. That is probably the idea that will have to be compromised the most, only because it, it just doesn't quite go with everything else. However, um, I think I have a bit of a, a, a middle point for these to meet at. So what, what I thought about is a character who is kind of a, a bit of a space pirate, right? And especially space pirates, but like kind of pirates in general, really lend themselves to that kind of mismatched uh, idea, right? Um, he's going to be largely sort of Aztec-inspired. Uh, and I pulled up some Ian McHugh. Ian McHugh concept art here. At least I think that's his. Um, this very, like, kind of scrapyard uh, like robot mismatched, rusted and, and dusty. And so that, let's see how that goes. Um, as far as personality, I kind of, I thought along the lines of, well, we have this dichotomy between the, the bird and the snake, right? And maybe it's a character who is, is in certainly, he, he's trying to, I don't know, harness the power of a star or a, or a, a planet or something, you know, like along those lines, something, it's pretty ridiculous I'm trying to trying to steal a sun um but just the idea of like a he a, he's kind of a, a lowly character right who who rises above and is aspirational to capturing giant celestial bodies um so that the sort of snake and bird right the the lowly mixed with the high and and sort of you know he's 
he's a pirate who's kind of who's a bit of he's kind of scum to at least he understands that about himself but he kind of has has delusions of of grandeur in a way too um i'm i'm looking forward to this a little bit of this challenge is going to be i'm just going to kind of do some mindless sketching here um a, a little bit of the challenge is going to be the the mismatched stuff because i what i'd love to do is is kind of make him uh each each part of him sort of uh, different, right? Arms and arms and legs, kind of all all looking like they he maybe be, through being like a, a conqueror of worlds or you know visiting different areas, he's kind of claimed a little piece of each place for himself or something like that. Um, there's a character that comes to mind uh, that I really loved from the Transformers animated show. I, I think there's there's versions of the character Lockdown in other transformers medium medias but uh that one specifically is this character who collects upgrades which is a little bit of a it's i i don't think he actually takes parts from other characters necessarily but upgrades at least so maybe auxiliary pieces of them and everything and he and he's kind of jumbled all together in this sort of frankenstein um mismatch right and he, so he's a bounty hunter character he's kind of he's he, He's on his own. He's kind of trophy hunting in this way where he's sort of collecting pieces of of people he's, you know, either defeated or, or stuff like that. There's also a, the old Buzz Lightyear of Star Command animated series. There's a character named XL. I think it's XL, who was also the same sort of piece together. He was definitely... Both of those characters are robots. So I, I don't know if... Our guy's gonna be a, a robot necessarily, but we'll we'll see how that goes. It's it's immensely easier to sort of make every piece of them very different by the conceit of them being robots. I really like this head. Uh, there's so much like kind of shape language going on in this Aztec head. There's sort of the 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 round but square. There's the spiral but blocky. There's the very square teeth. There's the the triangles of the those petals. And I was thinking along the lines of, if it's possible, the the body shape I think is honestly going to be the 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 hardest part of this. Um, making something interesting that's it's this balance that we're trying to strike, where each element is unique, but they all go together. If that makes sense. So if I uh, one thing I was I was thinking about is is if this kind of snake shape was the the head if from from the side he sort of had this profile where the the snake head was coming off the snake body was kind of trailing off of the back of him and then the body's here something like that i like giving characters sort of head tails like that so that's an idea and yeah This right now that I'm working with is sort of just a set of eyes inside of like the open mouth of the snake, of the Quetzal, Kotal. So that's that's something. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I'm thinking about how. Hmm. I'm I'm looking forward to the colors. I like the the red and green and maybe some of this orange and all of that sort of being beaten, rusted, worn, right, all together. Um it works well because like Voltron has the the blue, yellow, red, green, black, but I think if we sort of change things up a little bit so that they're all I, I don't know, just that red, green, orange color scheme, not only is it already present in this Quetzalcoatl but it, it just to me is like reads very pirate or uh post-apocalyptic kind of dust world type character um very like sort of like a I don't know the red and green it's kind of like this military or or just scrap kind of character um I'm gonna go smaller because right now I'm just starting to give this guy a kind of a typical human build and I'd love to sort of start with these small shapes here 
Um, another thing that would be cool that I'm messing with here is if he had this, uh, these sort of segments, right? I like this, the segments in this version of the body. Um, if he had an arm that kind of, let me, that's what I started doing here. I want to kind of make it a little bit more extreme, the curve. If he had an arm that, with a kind of a claw at the end of it, and it was very like cubic and made up of these sort of like tank tread pieces and the shoulder junction kind of landed right here but then it kind of kept going up further maybe a couple of like these little feathers on top that would kind of be interesting again the body like the main structure and the legs mismatching the legs is i don't know it's a weird ask even if you pull it off it's just it, I mean, okay, pirates, right? You've got what's the most cliche pirate thing is the the peg leg, and maybe we'll go peg leg, but I don't. It feels it feels obvious or easy, and we're doing this for fun, obviously too. And at this point, right now, I'm I'm not worried about drawing well. I'm I'm just ideating, right? This is all just about getting ideas out. Um, and this is the point where in your process too, you're just trying to get these ideas. If I do the one big arm, I'm worried that the big arm kind of takes over, if that makes sense. Got some coffee on hand. Here's a crucial uh, character design tip. Stay fueled. I'm worried that the, the arm just kind of takes everything else over, and maybe maybe color will help with that. Um, I'm also thinking about, although it adds a lot of extra work for, for what this is, and I, I actually, I the previous real-time character design that I did, um, I, the actual design process wasn't so much, uh, but I, there wasn't as much of it, but I did spend a lot of time on sort of the tail end rendering and everything, um, and so I'd like to to do that a little bit differently this time where we're we're focusing a little more time on on the the design process and also just kind of making it shorter in general i think that was about a, a four hour series or so uh anyway the the thing i was thinking is that if i added sort of a like a little legion of sort of chomping scrap robots like jacob's idea is am i giving myself a lot of ac extra time This is kind of cool. Yeah, I think color is going to be our friend here. So if I keep the legs actually similar, um, at least in shape, like I could, I could do this, right? And then this one, if this, the shapes are similar, but then the, the surfaces are different, right? Where this one maybe has like these kind of two dots and this one has an X or, you know, you can change things up that way. It, it still looks kind of shambled together um, but at least there you're not worried about especially if he was going to be moving or something like that you're you're less worried about like locomotion balance stuff like that gonna move the tail down a bit so this kind of profile view if we are gonna go with this version seems like the best uh, the most interesting way to look at things, right? Because you've got the, the arm kind of in the background, you've got the tail hanging down, and then these smaller elements are all visible in the foreground. Um, so I like this in general. Thanks for the tweet support there, Sam. Um, let's let's keep going. Uh, obviously, I, I never like to settle for sort of my first drawing, or if I can help it. Um, Get rid of this stuff. It's gone forever. It's just a piece of his hair now. Um, let's see. If I see right now, if he's kind of weighed down. Ooh, I like this. What? 
if this is kind of flexing down. <laughs> and then our, our second arm is noticeably smaller, but uses a bit of triangular shape design. Shape language, rather. And has a kind of a big shoulder pauldron here. Does that work? Maybe he's got the... I mean, this guy's pretty selfish, I'd say. I'd, I'd say he's a villain from what we're designing right now. <laughs> Let's see. Body's still pretty standard. We might end up with a very standard looking body to, to kind of anchor all of these other elements. Let's see. And I definitely want to like put some effort into the face a bit or the head design overall because right now it's very I'm doing like kind of the same very simple thing over and over um and he's feeling very like transformers honestly like very like I, I just anytime you're you're sort of putting like a very evil expression or angry expression on a robot I, I tend to start thinking of Decepticons and just that idea of, of angry Angry metal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those feathers we could we could honestly give him a little bit more of a lion kind of mane that's based on these feathers. That would be cool. That that would mean a much wider chest, which would actually I would welcome right now. Mm-hmm. Chewing some ice. Sorry if that's audible. Uh, so if we had this where these feathers are obviously not arraying this the way that they are in the source, that's fine. We're not trying to be accurate. We're just using it as inspiration. Then our... Yeah, this is cool. I like how it's kind of a... I forgot to mention, like, Blue Draconic Knight's idea of a planetary dragon. The, the Quetzalcoatl is a dragon. Um, so that, that at least, grocks. Um, I think the, the idea of, of dragons in general, like, are, they're characteristically sort of selfish, depending on the, the story they're in. So that works. Uh, this is cool. It's weird. Just kind of grafting very one to one the existing thing on here. Spirally nostril head ornaments. <laughs> so, facially, I think it's stronger if we have this open mouth, right? But then we see a mouth on his actual face. Just kind of sells the idea. And again, we can we can go organic with him, or or like sort of cyborg. I think cyborg is the best uh, option to go with, especially considering uh, how great Treasure Planet is. Can't <laughs> can't go wrong with cyborg pirates. Okay, so what's the what's the face of this guy like? I think we need fairly. Uh, what if his mouth kind of did a, a bit of this, right? A bit of jagged canines, like a snake. And I don't know that he's necessarily human. I think at the moment he's he's coming out sort of human. Snake eyes. Hmm. OK, 
Can we go? It's like that pit viper kind of nose, like that. Still very humanoid. I'm not sure. Well, placeholder. It's it's more detail than we had before, at least. Um, this I'd come down with to about here. I think I am getting a little too lost in detail at the moment, but it's it's something to keep over here. Look a little like goggles, the nostrils, which is fine, or or like sort of horns. So, okay, the reason that I drew this was I wanted to make our chest a bit bigger to support that giant arm. We see this, yeah, I kind of want to overshoot the junction. Of the shoulder there. Let's see. That works. Yeah, I'm a little bit dreading the, uh, how many segments this is broken up into, although... I think that's pretty doable, right? It's, that's pretty simplistic. That many segments. And uh, our shoulder going over here. This could kind of, this could easily go. Hmm. I'd like a little, sorry, I'm... Adding on, but some some of that, kind of like these scales are, and feathers at the top. <laughs> um, let's see. This is square two. I don't know if I want this to be square. I think I want kind of. I'm gonna disc here. And yeah, I, I kind of want this to be. Let's go more rounded triangular with it, right? It's a good way to blend these. And again, right now, what I'm drawing is is complete nonsense. I've just I've just drawn. I like I'm not worried about draftsmanship or anything here. It's still ideation. It's just a larger version of these small little things. Um, what's the best? So this. This arm's going like that. If this one's kind of maybe hanging, we're doing this. Hmm. Now well, let's keep what we had over here. That's the thing is, I mean, I'm just doing, like, I don't know what materials these things are made of yet, um, because with, with characters, that's sort of, that's very secondary, right? And unless there's a specific constraint or you're, you're adding to an existing sort of framework, right? Um, your, your shapes are more important than your materials. Those can always come later. So while I'm pretty sure that this thing is made of stone, I'm just not worried about it yet. What I'm more concerned about is that it's made of squares and that there's like there's the weight and size of it is is doing the right things for the character okay why am i freezing up on this so much maybe this hand will be a little bit more articulate or or maybe even he uh I don't know. See, I, I don't... There's such a danger here because this arm is so big already of just making the a character with a big arm and that's sort of what stands out. And what I'd love to stand out instead is this sort of mismatched nature of him. So this is, this is too small. What even? I have no explanation for that. Looking the way it does. 
Um, and what, we just taper this? I mean, part of this too is like asymmetry is what I want to aim for too. Yeah, I mean, it should be clear like how lazy I'm being with the pencil. This is all ideation. I don't have time to, to do this nice yet, right? It's just a, a waste of time to do like final passes on something that I'm not even convinced I'm gonna use yet. So a lot of times like concept art that you see in in uh, making of books and everything are, is a little bit doctored only from the standpoint of like sometimes it's it's made after the fact and stuff and a lot of actual concept work is very messy and uh, shape oriented right and uh, and painterly like like just blobs of paint or even like kit bashed photos and stuff um, not quite how I operate but that's that's something you see a lot because it's not about you know let's let's make an art book right it's about like let's get let's make our ideas physical and and visual so that we can get this project done okay that's interesting i, I uh, it's i mean it, for one thing this arm is kind of floating and nothing is meeting it like it needs to, it's almost too average. Like it needs to be like skinnier or sort of like our idea up there. Yeah, that works. Um, So let's go from here. I think uh, in general, the pieces are good. Let's shrink this a bit. Let's shrink these a lot. I think we can get more menacing with the face. Okay, so we are at, I think, 27 minutes in at this point, and for a YouTube video, that's a, that's a long time, oops, but in the character creation process, that's, that's nothing, that's kind of a drop in the bucket, um, and you guys are along for the ride. Um, so I took a, like, just a five-minute break there, and I figured out, mentally, sort of what's, what's bothering me here, uh, especially with this. Um, when I made that expansion to the wider body, that's, I think, where we had a, a bit of a misstep. Um, as far as, like, appealing to sort of the, I guess, the, the archetype or, or sort of what, what works with a, a character who is, like, scrappy and sort of in, in this transitional process of trying to gain power and everything, but, but starting a, a lot lower... I think uh, a scrappy and hungry... Man, isn't that what our last real-time character creation character was? Um, this this character who's, like, aspiring to be bigger but but started lower. I, I really think the, the body shape and everything should be more uh, reminiscent of, like, a, a, a skinny, scrawny-looking guy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play up that up a little bit here um and i also was thinking along the lines of with this arm that's bothering me so much I, i'd actually i think we could get some kind of cool overall poses if we just slung it up completely so let's go arm and yeah there's still kind of the worry about the other arm being a little bit too too big, like kind of overpowering the, the shape of the character. I think this sling is a good uh, asymmetrical kind of thing. But now, see, we get him a little bit more hunched. Like this. And bring that arm in. It can be a couple of segments like this. Uh, that's too far. Let's see, our shoulder's about here. Mm. 
and I think yeah the the addition of the the sling kind of makes him all one obviously you have the snake tail is sort of one big long segment here and the the arm is one long big segment but I think we we land a little bit more in snake territory we have like sort of singular movement streams if that makes sense this is also very uh organic compared to our previous idea um i i was thinking along the lines of like what where's the cloth <laughs> you know like when when we were doing the robot this, this this version like where's sort of the where's the cape where's the the tattered stuff again reminiscent of the last real-time character design but i don't know for me i've designed Dozens of characters since that video series was months ago, so treading similar ground doesn't feel too uh, too sacrilegious to me. Um, that's not that's not a pose, but but yeah. See, this is kind of this is maybe more along the lines of what we're looking for. Um, let's see, some feathers on top. <laughs> Keeping those feathers. Being stubborn about it. Um, let's see. What's uh what's the most interesting I mean we can still do a little bit of uh shoulder armor here, right? Maybe we go full Darth Maul and we we give him Cybernetic legs. Yeah. Cyborg man. Also, this face is. <laughs> I'm looking at it now. Ah, so so weird. Um, let's see. Yeah. So from here, I'd love to kind of like. Kind of a, like if a person was kind of hunched forward like this and had kind of like this kind of arm pose, like. Yeah. So for him, if we looked a little bit more straight on, kind of like that, arm, shoulder, elbow. Do need to sort of show that junction there of the of the arm. So now our, our kind of our biggest masses are this head tail and the arm. So we want them to sort of move together. Be complementary of each other. Yeah, it's upset. <laughs> So, foot forward, foot back here, maybe something like that. That way, he's not—he's not so much slunk over, but he's, yeah, snaky, slimy snake. Even though snakes aren't slimy, I do kind of like this. But this is something. Hmm. Okay. Let's uh let's <laughs> every time I see this face now. It's so funny. Okay, let's uh let's bring let's copy and paste this most recent 
or second most recent thing here. I don't know. The, this this one has a lot of good energy to it. Maybe if it was just more. Hmm. Like what if I, what if I flipped? I think, well, part of it, okay, this is, this is part of it. The legs should flip. Like that, so that there's a little bit of something happening there. This is, at this point, it's almost like, here's the big arm, and here's an arm behind his back, right? Except it's in front, in a sling. Is it, like, I don't know if a, a ruthless kind of pirate captain would have an arm in a sling. Maybe they would. It, it almost feels like to save face, they would like just cut it off completely or something, right? It's ridiculous, but I don't make the pirate rules. I just misinterpret them. <laughs> okay, uh, let's take this image here and work with our segments a bit. I like the the very skinny place we're at now, scrawny. And we don't have to go human with it. Um, just, just in general, these shapes, kind of like this. Let's go, let's see how much of this we can get to kind of arch. There we go. Yeah, that's better. And at what point is he sort of, is he robotic from this point down? Maybe. Oh, you know what would be kind of cool is a, Sort of a mono wheel, but it's, I don't know. It's like, at that point, it's like, okay, we get it. He's a snake, right? Um, yeah, this is cool. And I like the idea of the very, like, bare bones kind of shock type stuff down here. All of which will get its own distinct uh, hue. Okay, then we've got an arm and a sling. The sling is going like this. The arm is pointing out. Okay. I think that that's a good enough, like if this is clearly organic, the arm, that's, that's okay. And that, that means the rest of him can be pretty cybernetic. Um, oh, what if, oh, what if he had a second arm doing this? Yeah, he's got two arms. One's in a sling. And that's why he's allowed himself to heal one of them. He can he can make claims to his subordinates or those who challenge him that he can be just as dangerous with one arm. As somewhere with two. Okay, so it's sort of a double shoulder joint there. That'll have to work. Sort of like uh, if this is the shoulder joint, it's almost kind of split in half like that. That's interesting. 
I know a lot of times people just go for two shoulders, right? Yeah, I'm good with this. Okay, and then from here we get sling. Um, let's see. I, I want to actually workshop, like, now that we have a good pose and a pretty decent idea for what we want, he's actually kind of got two peg legs. <laughs> All of my resistance for the idea of the peg leg at the beginning. Now he's got two. Um, I, I'd like to focus, now that we have a, a good anatomical overall jumping off point, uh, I'd like to give the head some, some time exclusively. So let's do something like this. I don't know. Just something kind of interesting. And the uh, the head tail can kind of have its own feather pattern for for longer than just this the mane idea, right? That was something I I was thinking about too. Is the the lion mane is very sort of square in its, like, complete, you know, it's like a wreath around the head. It's it's very royal, um, and the lion is on top and all that. So I, I just, I don't know. I had misgivings about, let's see, let's expand that shoulder up just a bit more. We do need some more room. Okay, cool. Now now I feel like we have something that's interesting even without that arm. Like he would be, he'd be cool uh, if he was just, you know, naturally forearmed. Um, but, oh, so, okay. Yeah, that actually, in retrospect, works perfectly to have the single shoulder joint because if he was, if he had two, that would mean there would be a second arm down here. But at this point, he's sort of grafted this arm on whether he lost the original or the original is inside this one controlling it that that gives us that gives our giant arm room to move and articulate without worrying too much about a little dangly arm in the way um let's see kind of i like the curve back at the end in that sketch so we'll do that. Oops. Keep it. Keep it cubic. Maybe we can change some things down there, but overall, yeah, I like that. And uh, as we go, sort of little scales on the outside. Oh, Apple Pencil's dying. Okay. So when I come back, I'm going to put a little work into uh, making a, a little bit more of a unique head, and I'll uh, start the really fun aspect of, of kind of picking out colors for him. We're nowhere near like a final look, obviously, but this is at least a, a good like general version of what we're aiming to make. Um, and, and that we've already sort of found a really cool pose for him and everything makes me happy. So again, we're not far into a design necessarily. Like the, the amount of time we've spent is not much for a character design. Uh, but hopefully you've enjoyed the process so far and uh, are looking forward to the next part.